You're listening to Colonel Holler, episode five. My children of the night, welcome and sit a spell. Don't mind me, I'm just putting the finishing touches on my Halloween costume. I can't wait to go to Earth. Not just to scare people, of course, though that is always fun. I may have a bit more on my itinerary, though. This time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, the corn maze is a popular attraction. Fall frolickers wander through the tall stalks and face dead end after dead end in an attempt to reach the exit. Some of these mazes even incorporate elements of horror. Costumed actors jumping out for a scare. Sound effects, flashing lights. The corn mazes of today and even the famous hedge mazes of the Middle Ages are a far cry from their predecessor, the labyrinth, whose singular winding path encouraged spiritual reflection and a meditative mental state for its walkers. Mazes, on the other hand, have always been intended to disorient the senses, to perplex and upset us in our primordial brain, and to tease us just enough with small successes to keep us motivated to get out. As we visit Curdle Holler today, we find Chip and Bonita stuck in the maze of the catacombs beneath the city. Tired and in a daze, they carry on because their business is urgent. Won't you wander with us? Tonight's episode is called Friday Night Frights. Minerva, I remain tormented by the events of last night. Have you any word from Chip or Benita? Nothing since last night on the radio or the astral plane. But I'm still looking. Of course, my putrid Petunia. Thank you for bringing your grave top computer to the boutique. I know you'll find them. Do you need anything while you work? Tea? An Afghan? Vengeance for our past injustice? I'm all set up, Roddy. But are you sure you don't need help up front? Halloween Eve is a busy day for the store. Not to worry. I have Pumpkin on the register. Although, at present, he's eating cereal and causing quite a mess. I'm looking for the prize. If you dig any deeper for it, you'll reach the Seven Hells. Where in the Seven Hells am I? Excuse me, Minerva. You're in the Colonel Holler Boutique, home of the misanthropic mirror and 1,000 recipes for cooking human brain. We also sell keychains. Who should I see about selling a valuable item? That depends. Is it an arcane trinket to challenge the sanity of our customers? Better than that, it's a collector's item. Behold. It looks like a novelty toy. Some would call it an action figure. It's Zoltan, warlock of the galaxy. Admire the die-cast wand in conjuring action. Yes, I don't remember these toys from when I was a worm. I believe they were removed from the market when several souls were injured by the missile launcher, which does pique my interest. It's a first edition, painted with real rat's blood. Hmm. Pumpkin, put away your breakfast and evaluate this toy. Oh, look, it's Zotan. Pew, pew, pew. Pew. Take that, you puny human. You see, the boy likes it. Well, Pumpkin has some concerns about the paint job. I also have reservations. It's plenty spooky, but is it powerful enough for the boutique? Oh, but that's the best part. Some say each Zoltan figure contains a piece of his immortal soul. And if you find the secret button, you can unleash his most fearsome spell. I found it. What? Well, don't touch it. I wanted to buy a keychain. Now Zotan is Pumpkin's toy. Y'all in Cattle Holler. <laughs> Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Yeah. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler.
Okay, so Benita, are we trapped for eternity in the catacombs or the crypt? I get those mixed up. Well, same thing, Chip. They're both latrines filled with bodies. Are you still drunk from the party? Oh, I'm very sober right now, I assure you. Also, what are you eating? Hmm? Finger sandwiches. From the party. Ew, but you fell into that midden like a minute ago. <clears throat> Do what now? Ugh. The bone phone says it's only been a few hours, but it feels like days. We were so close to taking down Batsinger. Oh god, you were so bad at singing. You were like, I am Fibula. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, yeah, well, only one of us was crying when the gargoyle started yelling. I had something in my eye. It was a tear. Hard to say, hard to say. Pretty sure it was a tear. What was that? Ah! Ah! Who are you? Once I was called Steven. Now I'm a raving mad crypt creature. So it is a crypt. I knew it. I've been here too long to leave, but there is a way out for you. I saw it on an old map. If you travel deep enough down these passages and face the trials, you'll see the surface once again. Now. Do you have any questions before I sleep for a thousand years? Uh, yes, actually. How long were you watching us? Since you arrived. Okay, good, 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 good. I was wondering if you could clear something up for us. Chip was crying. Come on! What is this you're eating, pumpkin? Chocolate crypt cereal? You should be ashamed of yourself. Give it back to Pumpkin. I'm working on the puzzle. You've really made some progress on that maze. You may yet escape the catacombs. That's the plan. Well then, while Minerva searches for our friends, let us watch the news, yes? There's a lot going on today. It's Halloween Eve! And you know what that means. Tonight's the big bone coming game. The Curdle Holler Hobgoblins are coming off an undefeated season with 32 decapitations and 3,000 machete running yards as they head into tonight's matchup against their longtime rival, the Curdle Holler Creepy Clowns. We spoke with the Curdle Holler's coach, Carnage, about tonight's strategy. We're, we're, we're gonna go get them. Uh, we're, we're gonna rip them up uh, apart and taste their bones. Ah! It's a bold defensive The Creepy Clowns coach Brett Boogers already anticipates. We scattered some great hiding places and bought some wooden stakes. Mainly we just want to avoid the heartbreak of last year, when they literally ripped down our hearts. Speaking of heartbreak, Colonel Holla High will crown a new homecoming queen at halftime, recognizing the ghoul who best channels the school spirit. Your hobgoblins take the field tonight at 8 p.m. in Boogeyman Stadium. Go, Go gobs! Punky like the goblin. Uh, excuse me, some of us are still working to rescue our friends. Sorry! Minerva was in the AV club. What's that? Oh yeah! There's also an election today that will decide the fate of Colonel Holler and our eternal souls. We spoke with candidate Albert Ghost about his chances of unseating longtime caretaker Belfry Batsinger. The reasons to support my candidacy are multitudinous, but we're really talking about the allocation of municipal resources and fiduciary responsibility to the citizens of Colonel Holler. After regaining consciousness, I spoke with Batsinger about accusations of interference in the electoral process. He had this to say. My daddy always said, do good, don't do wrong behind the barn. And I don't see a barn, so how could I do anything wrong? Enjoy the game! 
Don't vote. I'll be right here like I always have. Go Gobs! Meanwhile, third-party single-issue candidate Undead Zed stuck to his message. Brains! He was later arrested for campaigning near a polling site, but all three candidates remain on the ballot. Pumpkin's confused. Why do you put on a closed captions? I'm 500 years old. Let us not exhume old issues. On Halloween tomorrow, following annual tradition, the new caretaker will lift the veil between the dead and the living, allowing us to stalk the moral plane and scare people silly to gather fright power for the coming year. Without fright power, some say our town will fade from existence, others say we'll turn into pumpkins, and still others say we shouldn't schedule the football game and the election on the same day. Who knows? You can vote all day today at the high school gymnasium. It's been nice knowing you. This is Colonel Holla News. What time was that football game again? Try to keep up, Pumpkin. There are more important things at stake. <coughs> Albert, a pleasure as always. But shouldn't you be campaigning? I'll be shaking hands with regular folks like myself at tonight's sporting event, but I wanted to see if you ever found that incriminating evidence against Batsinger. We can't find Chipper Nita anywhere. They forgot about us. <coughs> Perish the thought. We have the evidence, of course. We're merely preparing to share the proof in a spectacular fashion. Oh, all right, then. I'll see you at my victory party. Well, he's confident I'll give him that. I think Albert looks good in flannel. Look, I think we found our first trial. You see that monster sitting alone by a folding table? He's right down that passage. Is that a minotaur? Because that would be rad. I can hear you talking about me. Come forth and hear your challenge. Hail, minotaur. I'm Chip Clearly, and this brave woman shall be my champion in combat. Chip, if you weren't already dead. Combat? Oh, how great. If you wish to proceed, you must solve my puzzle. Uh, but I warn you, all others have failed. Their bones gather dust at my feet. Well, okay, well, we don't have a choice, so let's hear your riddle. No! It's literally a jigsaw puzzle. One thousand pieces of tedium and despair. <sighs> right. Well, first things first. Let's see the box so we know what this thing looks like. There's no box. I told you this would be difficult. I will break your brain. No way, friend. We have to see the picture. Oh my god, fine. It's a Halloween party. It's a bunch of monsters having a good time. Happy? Now get ready. I'm going to time you. I guess that stopwatch has good batteries. And go! Okay, find the corner pieces first. We'll work our way inside. Don't be stupid. We work from the middle. The middle? That's just crazy. Do you know puzzles? Have you ever done a puzzle? I've done fold-outs. Okay, well, it's kind of like that, except it's a puzzle. And if we don't finish, we're stuck here forever. All right, here's a corner piece. How old is this puzzle anyway? What if it's missing pieces? It's not missing any pieces. Yeah, but how would you really know? I, I just know. Now keep working. Good afternoon, Gablena. I am here to vote for my good friend Albert Ghost in this historic election for caretaker of Colonel Holler. <laughs> okay, well, I don't need to know all that, baby. Just need your ID. Of course. Here is my death certificate, a police report for my missing body, and the deed to my haunted mansion. All right, let me get out my book. Welcome to the high school, by the way. You going to the game? Of course, I am a band booster. Go gobs! <laughs> Ain't nobody here because of the game. Now let's see. 
says you changed your name from Fred Fangula to Count Fangula. Is that right? Yes, I felt like I earned it. Okay, let me double check. You sit tight. Don't worry, I change my name all the time to keep things interesting. My old friend, the old coot, I am so happy to see you. It's eerily quiet, and I worry no one is here to support Albert Ghost, who is a very, very boring, good man. Oh, isn't he just? Honestly, I wasn't going to come, but you know Goliath never misses an election. Plus, I made some new friends, and of course, that Belfry's a devil. Well, good gracious, everyone. My heart swells with civic pride as I look upon this gymnasium of hope and dreams and old exercise equipment pushed against the walls. Look, it's Belfry Batsinger. Mmm, whatever gave it away. Well, here's my old friend Pastor Munch, looking trim and prayerful and tax-exempt. Miss Weaver, good to see you. And there's Mr. John Eyeball. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. All right, y'all, line up and get your handshakes. Don't be shy. It is very normal and legal to shake hands with the candidate right before you vote. Oh, don't pay us any mind. We're just here to cast our votes like one of you all, because every vote counts. Yeah, but y'all just remember that Belfry paid his dues. Heh. <laughs> Ain't that right, Belfry? <clears throat> Thank you, Sheriff. Now, uh, may the best man win and so forth. Carry on, everyone. Well, that was enlightening. Did you find my name, Goblin? <laughs> yeah, you're good, baby. Just sign under my poking stick. What a relief. Now to find a voting booth and hurry to the game. Um, will Goliath be voting also? Oh, yes. We're waiting on a paper ballot because he's being contrary. I'll see you at the game. Chip, Bonita, can you hear us? We almost have a signal. Stop pressing the button, Chip. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Like a voice beyond the grave. Where are you? Tell us what happened since we lost contact. I heard Chip's churlish screams, and then nothing. We feared the worst. We're still in these weird catacombs beneath the mausoleum. Any other relevant details? We saw a minotaur. Oh, and Chip was crying earlier. But not cause the Minotaur. That part I liked. A Minotaur? Hmm. I've seen that somewhere. Pumpkin, honey, hand me that cereal box. Okay, but I get the prize. Hold on a moment. Aha! Uh -huh. That's what I thought. The map on the cereal box shows the real catacombs beneath the city. I think I know where they are. I can see the way out. Of course. Look at your gray matter twitching. You're a genius. The pumpkin did the puzzle. I know you did, honey. Bonita, did you hear us? We found a map on pumpkin cereal box. Uh, yeah, that sounds reassuring. I have always trusted cereal. What about our evidence? I tried sending the photos. Did they come through? No connection. You're too deep under the mausoleum. Still, if we can get them out in time, we could release the photos before the polls close. Unfortunately, everyone is at the football game. But that's perfect. We can lead them to an exit right under the stadium. At that range, I can throw the photos onto the jumbo screen, and the whole town will see the evidence. According to the serial map, they can emerge right on the field. At halftime, most likely. Fantastic! We'll make our case directly to the town. Everyone's going to know how Batsinger stole all our fright power to buy the election. And if there's time, I'll tell them about jail. Yes, yes. It's a devious plot, and I'm sure it will work. I'm fired up. What's next, Roddy? According to Serial Box, you have a few more trials before you reach the stadium. We'll walk you through Pumpkin's map, but tarry no longer. Copy that, Big Butler. Find some easy trials, would ya? We must go to the game and set up our equipment. Minerva, bring the Serial Box. Pumpkin, are you coming with us? No, Pumpkin gonna take the parade. Welcome to Boogeyman Field, where we're watching a thrilling matchup between the creepy 
baby clowns and your curdled holler hobgoblins. We're halfway through the first quarter, and the creepy clown defense is already flagging. They've tried silver bullets, wooden stakes, and even begging, but nothing can stop the horde. Destroy them! While the quarterback sharpens his claws, I'll remind you there's an election going on that may determine the fate of our very existence. But now back to the game. Looks like they're setting up. And there's the snap. Oh, he ran right through him. Okay, girls. You're here because you was up to trouble again. You got it wrong, Mr. Floss. It was them other girls what mooned the werewolf. Yeah, he was having trouble turning into a werewolf. We were trying to help. Well, today you're going to help me sell concessions. For punishment? Yes, for punishment. Now grab these stadium snacks. What is this stuff? This thing's got hair. And this one's moving. They're all things I found on the side of the roads. That's gross. I'm going to throw up. Now what's in these corpse critters? That cinnamon? Hmm? No, that's eyeball. Stop eating my product, Terry. I sold everything. Can I leave? Eyes. No, you didn't. You girls are going to be trouble. We're acting out because we're bored. Well, tough. Life is boring. Now sell these concessions. What an exciting quarter. What's this? It looks like the Colonel Holler mascot, an actual hobgoblin, is tearing into the creepy clown. So much blood. Folks, this is why we have the goblin cam. Man, I feel kind of bad for that creepy clown. Don't feel bad. No one has it worse than us. Okay, we worked a puzzle with the world's loneliest minotaur and went through the loop-de-loop slide. What was the next thing Rochester said we would pass? He said something about a cauldron. We must be getting close. I think I can hear bubbling. And do you smell that? Something smells delicious. Yeah, something smells all right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, you yummy mummy. Introduce yourself. How you doing? I'm Chip Clearly. How about you, succulent Sue? You can call me Nita. Nita? As in, I need a knife to cut through all that meat? <laughs> no. Be nice. So what are your names? She's Louise. She's Barbara. And she's Erlene. Wait, Louise, Barbara, Erlene? Wait. Are you named after the Mandrell sisters? No, they were named after us. How is that possible? Silence! You've come along at just the right time. You're going to help us complete our fetid mushroom stew. Mushroom stew? Is that what smells so good? We did not ask your opinion, my little rump roast. Do I detect a hint of basil? Why don't you step closer to the cauldron, dear? The recipe calls for chip beef. Chip, don't go over there. You come here too, little dumpling. I'm afraid that the two of you won't be passing through until we have some meat for our stew. Okay, um, you just want some meat, right? Would any meat do? That's right. We just need meat. Meat 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 meat, 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 I'm not meat, giving them meat, any meat, meat, meat. Get it? Meat. Made out of me. It's a pun. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I think I can fix this. And I don't want to hear anything about this when this is all over. What do you mean? Here, ladies. Um, here. Here are three ghost pepper hot wings. If I give you these, will you let us pass? Meat, 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 Hey, they served those wings at Bat Singer's party. Were you keeping them? In my brassiere? Yes, I was. How could you have known we were going to be stuck in the catacombs? I didn't know, okay? I just wanted to take some home for later. They would have given you a doggy bag. Get your stuff 
uh, gross stuff for sale. Whatever. You ain't never gonna peddle this crud that way. Hey, go along, Mr. Ugly. Oh, my eyeball. You owe me four zaps. Parker, man, what do you have for sale? Frog on a stick and Cracker Jacks. Oh, that sounds good. What is the Cracker Jack? I don't know. Some kind of stupid brown popcorn. It looks haunted. Excuse me, young Casey. Ew. Hey, look, Terry. It's that weird old butler dude from the stupid store we ruined. Well now, Casey. Your cult mandated assistance at the boutique certainly left a lot to be desired. But I would hardly say you ruined the store. We did too. We ruined it. With our antics. <sighs> Very well, young Terry. It is I... Rochester, the weird old butler dude from the store you ruined. And this is my associate, the dreadful Minerva. Hi, girls. Hey, you old rock face. You look like a finger that's been in the bathtub too long. You'd still take baths, Terry? That's so babyish. I'm stressed out. I gotta soak. Yes, I can see that the two of you are as frightfully disruptive as you were the day you almost ruined the town with those horrid plastic singing daisies. How would you like to cause another disruption? Keep talking, coattails! It is your job to bring refreshments to the Hobgoblin's announcer in his booth at halftime, is it not? Yeah, we're supposed to bring him these Cracker Jack things or whatever. It's old people food. Well, here's what you can do, young Casey. To wreak vengeance on all the old ghouls in this town who keep forcing you to engage in character-building acts of service. Do you see this device? Yeah, it's like blinking or whatever. It's stupid. Yes, Casey. Take the stupid blinking thing and place it underneath the game announcer's desk near the microphone. It's magnetic. It will adhere. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, duh. I'm not stupid. Give me it. Whatever. And you, Miss Terry. What? At halftime, you go down to the sidelines with his microphone and wait. What am I waiting on, Cracklehead? You'll know it when you see it. You'll be giving this Bluetooth mic to someone who's going to interrupt the bone-coming queen ceremony. Good. I hate them old pageant chicks. Think they're bearing me just because they smile and wave. I can too. I learned that when I was a baby. Indeed, young Terry. If you want to get your revenge, make sure that you both do your tasks as soon as the halftime buzzer tolls. I'm on it, you old penguin. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Whatever. But only because we're bored. Excellent. You'll make quite the scene. Now excuse us, girls. Roddy and I need to make ourselves look convincingly electrocuted. So we can disguise ourselves as jumbo screen technicians. Who needs electrocution? Just one glance at your withered face ignites my very soul, Minerva. You horrible woman. Oh, Roddy. You decrepit rascal. I cannot stress enough that the situation is dire. If you look at my real-time fright crystal projections, you will see that the veil cannot be lifted at midnight unless we stop the rampant waste of fright power by Belfry Batsinger. Good job, Ah, oh, that's right, pal. Stop the waste. So it is of utmost importance that you walk over to the fright school gymnasium and cast your vote. <laughs> Allow me to clarify, you mustn't cast your vote for Belfry Batsinger. I would like for you to vote for me. Sure thing, fella. Ooh, shut down, go gobs! Time to move the head down to the field. I very much appreciate your vote, sir. Is there an election today or something? Oh, goodness. Perhaps if I explain again. Oh, dear Albert, it's no use. These townspeople have given up. They have no fright power of their own. They're reduced to getting their thrills by watching the hobgoblins play headball. Dead-eyed, mouths agape. It's really sad. The scare grid simply cannot handle these bizarre fluctuations in fright power. Mimi, I'm not feeling optimistic. 
Though I trust the democratic process, I feel as though the citizens may be too distracted to exercise their voting demons. It's all right, Albert. Remember, your boutique friends Chip and Bonita are working on a plan to expose the corruption. Rochester says they'll come through for you. Perhaps, Mimi. For the sake of the town, I hope you're correct. Get your stupid things here. Food for sale. Ugh. Here, Albert. This'll pep you up. Excuse me, miss. I'd like some Cracker Jack. Three zaps. You're like so old. Is it just me, or are the catacombs getting a little grosser through here? It's not just you. I'm seeing way fewer skulls and way more rats. Ew! I felt one's whiskers on my leg. Can you hear me, Chip and Bonita? Big butler here. We can hear you, Rochester. Are we almost out of this place? Think purgatory. They're in range, Minerva. Listen carefully, you two. Our plan for the bone coming ceremony is underway. Chip, keep your bone phone powered on. Minerva will link remotely to your photos of the Batsinger Bribes and show them on the jumbo screen at the game. You emerge from the catacombs. You will be on the field. You will be handed a microphone that is linked to the stadium public address system. Make your case to the crowd, and quickly. Do you understand? Yes, Rochester! I, I guess there's no point in asking if I might be able to get hair and makeup before we do this, right? I'm sorry, dear. The only adornment you will have is the truth. Ooh, Rochester, another question. Can we get a Chiron on the jumbo screen with my name and title? Something like, Chip Clearly, Handsome Genius Town Saver. Hey, if Chip gets a Chiron, I want a Chiron. Stop bickering before I leave you two down there and give your own important job to Pumpkin. Now be silent like the dead. You have but one obstacle remaining. The cereal box denotes a large circle embossed with the town's seal and motto. That's the way out of the catacombs. But wouldn't that mean we exit somewhere in the town square, like by the giant ice cream cone? No, oddly enough. I don't know what your final trial will be, but I wish you luck. We're ready for you. Well, that's weird. I wonder what it could be. A giant circle with the town seal? <laughs> Hello? Mr. Circle? I do not know that name. Where are you? I am above you. Oh, hi there, Mr. Big Circle. I am the guardian spirit of the magical door that leads to the dirt and sky. My name is Enchantman. Well, that's a nice name, sir. Is it short for something? <sighs> yes, it is. But I don't want to tell you my real name. In... Gelata Man? Enya... Chant Man? Those are both terrible guesses, but none more terrible than the terrible truth of Enchant Man. I'm sorry, Enchant Man. Would you like to tell us more? It has been many moons since I have conversed with a mortal. This magical portal was once in use by many who served the town. But then, they put plastic grass over me, and no one sees or speaks to me any longer. That sounds like it hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. It did hurt my feelings. I suppose you would bid me to open. Well, Enchan Man, we would love to have you open up if that's what you want to do. But tell us a little bit more about yourself. We've got the time. We really don't. Be patient, Nita. I can tell this Enchant Man is a sensitive soul. He's a poet, like me. Uh. I'm just gonna show this beautiful round door spirit man some kindness. Enchant Man appreciates you, human. I will open the door for any who are involved in an act of service. As the town motto states, serve soft, large or small. Are you mortals serving others or only yourselves? Oh! Well, we are serving others. Um, we are en route to expose the corruption of caretaker Batsinger. He's been stealing from the town fright power supply. It's very important that we tell everyone. I promise that it's not just so we can get out of here. I mean, I would love to get out of here and into a hot bath, but 
We really are doing this for the town. Oh my god. I am moved by your kindness, mummy man, and your passion, spooky cleavage lady. And now I shall move. Climb up, and you may leave. Oh, say, that's just swell, Enchant Man. Thank you. You are a great friend. Can we be best friends now? I'd like that. Okay, best friend, now you gotta tell us. What is Enchant Man short for? <sighs> Very well. It's... Enchanted manhole cover. Oh, okay. Wait, that means... The catacombs ran into the sewer. Yeah, we've, we've been in the sewer. Now to help you serve the town, I will open and breach the false ground that lies above. Go, Enchant Man! Yeah! One more push... should display any moment now. You gorgeous, festering genius. Now we just wait. It's agony. Beautiful agony. Scary citizens of Colonel Holla, it is time for your Halloween Eve bone-coming queen processional. At this time, please pick up your eyeballs and point them to the 50-yard line as the Colonel Holla Fright School marching band serenades the court. Come on, Chip. Come on, Bonita. This connection is fragile. Hailing from the Undersea Kingdom, it's Kelvin Leviathan. Kelvin is wearing a seaweed gown, and her calls this evening is literacy for pirate ghosts. Oh, it's my daughter! Yeah! Never. I believe I spy young Terry on the field near the Wattagoos. The other youth, Casey, just sent me a snap screen that reads, quote, Stupid blinking thing is on the thing now. Get off my case, Grandpa. She lacks manners, but at least is resourceful. I'm seeing the sync signal from Chip's phone. They're very close, but the uplink is slow. And let's take a moment to admire the hand-woven spider silk gown worn tonight by Savannah Huntsman. Savannah is sponsored by the Weaving Circle and hopes to one day build a web in your garage door. Go Savannah! Oh, she looks beautiful. Oh, she's so beautiful. We're going to falls for a moment in our ceremony as we investigate a disruption on the field. It seems as though a couple of odd jobs have managed to tunnel through the field from underground. They are accompanied tonight by a very large, magical, antique manhole cover. <gasps> and it looks like they have something to say as one of their party, a mummy, is flailing his limbs in a way that resembles the 1960s dance called the Freddy. Roddy, they've done it. Come on, microphone. It's working, and I put Pumpkin on the sideline camera. Can you switch the feed back and forth? I've got it. People of Colonel Holler, stop what you're doing and listen to us right now! What's this old We are listening. My name is Chip Clearly, and this is Benita Von Wingenkamp. We run the boutique downtown, and we're here to tell you that your caretaker, Belfry Batsinger, is stealing the town's fright power and using it recklessly. Look at the jumbo screen. We have proof. He's using it to heat his high ceiling rooms and to grease the palms of his cronies. Belfry Batsinger is the reason we've been having problems with our fright power. He's been stealing pieces of the town Fright Crystal and giving them away as bribes. Look! Belfry Batsinger is the reason we've had to work so hard on our scares for Halloween. He's the reason none of you are as scary or as awesome as you should be. What do you mean? I'm still scary, man. 
Are you scary, Citizen Bloody Mary? I heard you couldn't appear in mirrors anymore, even when they said your name five times. Oh, it's true. I've been sending my husband Buddy to scare people in my plays. <laughs> We've got pumpkins who are too scared to be jack-o'-lanterns. Hey. Snakes who have to use rubber snakes to prank people. Zombies who only half-heartedly go after brains. Phantoms who can't say boo to a mouse. And I blame Batsinger and his corrupt lackey, the Sheriff, for draining the town of fright power. At this very moment, the Sheriff is at the jail keeping watch over Rocky, the dangerous stone golem whose powered cell locks could fail at any moment. That's right. So if you all let Belfry Batsinger roost in the caretaker's mausoleum for another term, we won't even have a town left to call home. If you care about your neighbors at all, you need to walk next door right now and cast your vote for Albert Ghost. He's not wealthy or charismatic or good looking. I'm standing right here, Chip. I floated up behind you a moment ago. <laughs> this ghost right here cares about this town and the weird monster people in it. Yeah, listen, we're almost done. Okay, but I just have one more thing to say. Uh, I've not been in Colonel Holler as long as some of you, so I don't know everything about this place. But that's how life is. We live our lives on Earth, and we think we know what that life was about. But then we die, and we come here, and our identities are handed to us, and our problems are handed to us, and we don't know why we're here, and we don't know what we're supposed to do. The only thing we know is that others are depending on us. And we need civil servants who take that responsibility seriously. We need civil servants like Albert Ghost, who this whole time has been living up to the town motto, to serve soft, large and small. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a sheet ghost for crying out loud. He even looks like a salt serve cone. What more do you people want? Yeah, so get off your bony behinds, haul your carcasses to that fright school gymnasium, and cast your vote for Albert Ghost. <laughs> Hey, where'd you get those fuzzy slippers? I want a pair. What, these? They were in the inventory closet. Ew, it got its whiskers on me. Rat slippers. However did the two of you get back here so quickly? People were leaving the stadium in droves. It brought back a lot of fond memories of the Plague Panic of 86, and the Plague Panic of Vault 4, and the Plague Panic of 71. My new pal and Chan Man took us through the sewers and opened up a door for us right near the shop. Good man. That's achingly lovely, Chip. I've always wanted to befriend the Guardian of the Dank. Do you think Albert stands a chance to win, Rochester? I do, Bonita. But the polls are open for two more hours. So change out of your rat slippers and wipe off that green facial mask. We're going to the Fright School gym. <sighs> but I just got comfortable after my ordeal. You didn't cast a ballot yet, Benita. Nor did you, Chip. Serving your town requires more than just idle rabble-rousing. Oh, man. Let's go. But what if someone comes to the shop while we're gone? Say hi to Pumpkin. I'm in charge. Yeah, Pumpkin. You're in charge. Let's go. Let's go.